Hello YouTube, today another video and today I'm going to show you some of the advanced configurations in HomeKit Infused 5. So first I'm going to show you how to set up the header. The header has already some pre-configured buttons over here but they don't do so much right now and they won't show you anything at all. So first of all we're going to open the device counters.yaml file you can find that in your HKI user uh, folder. So go to your Home Assistant folder, click on HKI user, and then click on Device Counters. It will open up this file. It's completely empty right now. You will have to fill in your own entities. And for the sake of this tutorial, I will only fill in some lights. So let's do that right now. And I will fill it in once again in the all entities list and I will tell you why you'll have to do it here once again later on. You will have to add all of your entities uh, inside of here and then define all of them in the same list over here. So for example we've got here all the light entities and over here all the switch entities. So let's do one and I'll add this to that list as well like so. Now restart Home Assistant and you will see that the buttons will now work correctly. So once Home Assistant is back up you can see that it now shows the amount of lights and switches that are currently on. So you can see that my kitchen hood is currently on and I've got three lights currently on as well. The reason to add it to the all entities list is if you make your view smaller which I'm going to show you right now and there you go you'll see a smaller uh, icon which is handy for iPhones or uh, smartphones in general um, which does not ha do not have enough space to show all of these icons and it will turn into a smaller button instead and if you click on it it will show you a list of everything that's currently on. So that's how you set up device counters um, at the same time you can also change the alarm the alarm is by default this uh, pop-up but you can change it as well and for that we'll need to go to the config file so go to your HKI user folder again click on config and then click on the config.yaml file and in this file you will find a few uh, settings that you can't find anywhere else so you can set up your alarm control panel entity in here uh, by default you'll get this one you can use that entity to automate uh, your own alarm uh, but if you have a different alarm setup you can change it here uh, if you don't have an alarm or you don't want to show the badge you can change it here and set this to false and it will no longer show this icon in the header and the same is true for badges you can see them here so we've got the thermostats badge, uh, badge over here which is this one uh, I can change the icon, I can change uh, the sensor that is used uh, to show the number, uh, I'd leave this as the default if I were you, but if you know what you're doing you can change it. Uh, the group entity is a group that we've created, um, just leave it as the default and the grid area is where it is placed, so it's the sixth item from the right after the alarm button. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can change that as well. So if I say put this in f the first, uh, it's called one. If I put put it on one, it would it would show up here instead of there, and so on. And if I wanted to remove uh, one of these, I can just remove it entirely or comment it out however you want to. Next we have the pop-up 
uh, pop-ups close button orientation this is the button which is located in the pop-ups for here you can see I've placed it on the right but if you prefer to have it on the left side which is handy for left-handed people you can also set it to be on the left this is something that you should probably not touch but you can change the color of light pop-ups in here which I will not show you uh, in this tutorial you can set up the find my add-on in here as well uh, which you can find on my repository on how to set that up it's not really hard to do but I'm not going to show you in this tutorial because basically you can just change these entities to whatever you uh, to whatever you have and it will work for you and lastly for this file we have the profile menu and the profile menu is really really cool and I'm going to show you what I can do so over here we've got the profile menu you can see a cog right now uh, which is not really interesting and you can see an icon right here which is not really interesting to solve this problem or it's not really a problem but it looks a little bit, a little bit better if you add an entity picture to it you go to the configuration you click on people and zones you click on the person and you add a picture so in this case I'll add this picture Mr. Bean over here. Let's do it like so. Crop it, update it, and if I go back to the HomeKit Infused uh, interface, you'll see that that entity picture is now showing up over there, which is pretty cool in my opinion. And if you click on it, you'll also see it over here. That's pretty cool. This page can be completely customized. Uh, with the exception of the top uh, navigation buttons and the search bar but all the other stuff can be changed so for example we've got the good night Jimmy Saturday 12 March 2022 over here and that's basically what is in here the code is exactly this you can change it to whatever if you'd like to say hello world it will show you that text instead but we can also add cards and this is really cool because this will add um, some kind of configuration to this page all of these cards will be inside of a folded uh, card it's called a fold entity row and that's how we need to configure it and how to configure stuff like this can be found on a configuration page inside of the documentation you will find it here in the general config so you can see you can set the alarm as you can see here but you can also change the alarm pop-up for example which is really cool you can change it to have your own cards you can see the header and in, uh, information that we just talked about uh, there are some features that I didn't talk about but you can find them here uh, the pop-up close button we, uh, we talked about that one as well and the profile menu and this is what we're talking right about right now and which is really cool so we can have <coughs> uh, the markdown card which is already in there which is this uh, card over here hello world and we can add cards and to add cards we can see the options here so for example we'll have a title called location in this case um, let's call it something different uh, markdown cards because I don't have a person entity with a location currently uh, we'll change it to uh, something like um, oh, we'll leave it this like this we can change the padding that's how uh, the cards below will be shown I'll just remove this and below that we'll enter enter the cards so it is already an entities card that means that if you want to use a default home assistant card you need to start your, your stack like this
if you do not define it like this, it will not render and throw an error. So you can't have it like this. This is only true for this specific page and only true for default core home assistant cards. Custom cards do not need to be defined that way and can be defined immediately. And for this example, I will use a powerful state switch, which is really cool because it can show you cards depending on the logged in user. So I've typed in a state switch, use the entity, the entity is user, and then <coughs> for the states, I'll use the usernames. So for me, it will show a markdown card with content Jimmy. For my wife, it will show a markdown card with the content Stephanie. So let's save this and show you what this looks like. And if you're looking for a way to use the custom state switch card, you can look on the official repository for state switch. I've placed a link down in the description below so you can go there immediately. But you can use any card you want to show up in here. So let's restart Home Assistant, which can be done from this menu. Click here, click on Restart, and wait for Home Assistant to have restarted. So Home Assistant has restarted. And we can now see that if we click on the Profile button, we have Markdown cards over here. So we expand this, you can see it only shows the Jimmy card that we defined over here. So it doesn't show the Stephanie card because it only will only show that for for her. So to show you, I'm gonna log out. Log in Stephanie. And if you look here, you can see that her card shows Stephanie. Now you can do this with any card you want and it will show up a specific card for a specific user. I think that's pretty cool um, and there's one last thing that you can add to this menu and that is a media player. And you can see it over here. Let's see. We, you can see it over here. You can add a configuration of a media player like so to your own setup which is pretty cool since I haven't set up any media players for the uh, test configuration I'll show you with my uh, standard configuration then you'll see there is a media player at the bottom which shows um, only for me and only my own media player and you can also see that I've got some stuff added here as well so like a calendar or uh, a waste calendar which is pretty cool uh, I've even got a uh, Google cast in here which is pretty pretty cool you can do all of this uh, by uh, setting them up in the config.yaml file lastly we'll go over to the notifications notifications are the ones that show up in the subtitle bar and they will only show up if you don't set a, a subtitle in the view config. So let's go back to the views.yaml file and I'll show you what I mean. So in this case, you'll see that in our lights view, there is no subtitle. So if I go to the lights, it will show the notifications as well. But in our menu view, we do have a subtitle. So if we go to the menu view, you see the, it will not show any notifications but it will show the subtitle instead. So on all views that do show notifications we can open the notification.yaml file and you can find that in the HKI user and then click on notifications. There is already one notification set up for you which you can see here and I will change um, this to whatever I have currently just to show you what it does. So I'll put in light dot um, so like so okay and then I'll put state on yes and then I'll add uh, 
the icon uh, like so light bulb and then the lights in the office is currently on <coughs> if I save this and reload Lovelace from here let's wait a few seconds and see what happens and then you can see the light in the office is currently on and that is because the light in the office is currently on. If I were to turn off the light, it will disappear and no longer show. So you can see if I turn it back on, it will show up in here. And these icons can be swiped through. So if you were to add another, uh, another notification like so, and in this case I will do a switch. like so so we've got two notifications now and if I reload Lovelace you can see there are now two notifications one like this and one over here so the kitchen hood is currently on and the lights in the office is currently on so if I turn off uh, turn off the kitchen hood it will be removed from the notifications list and if we turn it back on it will be returned to the notifications list lastly we have some special options and we can for example add this and if it is on it will show a spinning icon instead which is pretty cool nothing fancy but you can see there's a spinning icon now which gives the notifications a little bit more or dynamic. Well that's it for the uh, advanced configuration there are way way more things to do and more uh, configurations to to change like a tap action and what it does when you click on a notification and such but you can find all of this in the documentation there's just way too much to, to go over and that would take hours to document uh, in a video and that would be boring I guess so um, thank you for watching I hope you liked this video and if you did please like and subscribe and as always have a nice day cheers